My name is Stan Freifeld, although um, I guess my wife has a lot of other names for me, but I, I won't mention that now. I'm director of uh, mentoring at Macmillan Analysis. I work with Larry Macmillan, uh, the author and trader and, uh, and educator. Um, so, well, thank you. Thank, thank you for uh, for coming, uh, everybody. I, I guess good afternoon, good morning, and uh, in some places, good uh, good evening as well. I'm going to cover a topic today that people have probably heard a lot about, and I, I think might not uh, fully understand. I'm going to give a, a, what I think is a pretty good introduction to it. We'll we'll have an example at the end. It's profit with delta neutral positions, and I'll define what that means. And um, well, let, let's. There, there's a lot of material, so I, I think we'll get right into it. Here's an outline of the presentation. I, I kind of skipped the riddles. Uh, I normally start presentations with riddles, um, just to as a warm up. But we'll we'll skip that. I have a slide that shows who I am. Although I, I guess Renee, you gave a great introduction, uh, but I'll show it anyway. I have to read a disclaimer. Uh, I'll talk about the Greeks that we need. Uh, particularly delta and gamma, and then uh, because I couldn't resist, I'll mention the, the other three. And then we'll talk about delta neutral, the real guts of the uh, presentation. I'll define it, tell you why you might want to do it, show you how to do it. We'll go through an example. And then uh, we'll see, does it really work? Um, you know, I've heard people say, well, it, it might not work so well. Sure, it'll work uh, in theory, but how about in practice? We'll take a look at that. Then there are some problems that I'll talk about relative to uh, delta neutral, and I'll show you the tools that are available for, uh, for putting together delta neutral positions. And then at the very end, I'll, I'll talk about some specials that we have. Uh, and I'll provide my contact information. I'm a real options junkie. I, I think about options and I trade options all day long. I'm mentoring students um, and I'm trading. And at night, uh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm still thinking a lot about options. In, in fact, sometimes I think I need more of a life. Uh, can't only do options, but I, I really love it. I consider myself not only an educator, but a student as well. All right. so. Um, let me tell you who I am, uh, a little more detail. Here's a picture of me, uh, actually when I had more hair. This is from the floor of the American Stock Exchange. This is a, a trading jacket, um, and it, it, this is a white badge. It gave me a little bit of power because I became a floor official. Um, I, I think Renee mentioned all the, the things that are here, um, so I'm just going to move on. Here's a, a disclaimer. I'll, I'll read it very quickly. The presentation is for educational informational purposes only. Should, should not be construed as a solicitation to buy or sell options or other securities of any kind. We're not advising or recommending the use of, of the strategies or techniques described. There are multiple risks inherent to options trading that may expose investors and traders to potentially rapid and substantial losses. You agree that Macmillan Analysis Corp and especially me, especially Stan Freifeld, right, is not liable for any trading losses or other consequential damages. Um, option trading is not suitable for everyone, and you could learn more about it through the Options Clearing Corporation uh, publication that they have, uh, which has the characteristics and, and risks of, uh, of options trading. Okay, with that out of the way, we'll, we'll get into the presentation. So to understand what delta neutral is, one needs to know the Greeks. I said that. The general um, definition of delta is this. Delta is a change in an options premium relative to a one-point change in the price of the stock. And that's either up or down, a, a change in the price, uh, which could go either way. A more mathematical definition uh, is that it is delta is the first derivative of an options premium relative to a change in the price of the stock. And I'm going a little quickly here. I'm reading things a little fast uh, because there is a lot of material. Gamma, the general definition, uh, gamma is the change in an option's delta. So it doesn't talk about the price of the option. It talks about a change in the delta, okay? And that's relative to a one-point change in the price of the stock. The more mathematical definition, again, uh, 
gamma is the second derivative of an options premium relative to a change in the price of the stock. And um, the Greeks apply to other, uh, to, to options that are not only stock options, but index options, options on futures, et cetera. I'm going to be talking about stock options here, but the concept would be the same um, for any other type of option as well. All right. The other Greeks uh, that you should know about, um, I'm not going to talk about them today because they're not particularly relevant to, um, to what I'm going to show you, um, are Theta, Vega, and Rho. And they're kind of uh, well, they're very important to know. In fact, my take on the Greeks in general is that if you don't understand the Greeks, you probably shouldn't be trading options. Um, I liken Greeks to the gauges in a car, just like you wouldn't drive a car that didn't have gauges. Well, if you're trading options without the Greeks, uh, you're, driving, you're, you're driving without, uh, without gauges. So, oh, and there, there was one other thing I, I meant to, uh, to say at the very beginning, and that is I usually go through uh, something that, that I call my, my bad news and good news. And I'll tell you the bad news first. Um, and that, it's, it's the bad news about trading options. And that is, I think, probably most retail traders who trade options end up losing money. Now, that, that's not very good to hear, of course, and options are very competitive. So my concept is that what you have to do to make money trading options, you have to be more motivated, work a little harder, and, uh, and be more educated about how options work. And trading, you know, trading options is complicated, but it's not rocket science. And I think um, with the educational seminars that, um, that investor inspirations and other companies put out, put on, um, and attending those will give you the advantage that you need because most people who trade options don't make the effort to really learn how options work. I, I think the um, my analogy on that is I think people spend more time trying to to save twenty five dollars on, on a TV and go to several different stores and spend time online, then they will actually learning about, uh, about options. I'll put on a, a $5,000 or $2,000 position without really understanding how options work. And uh, so I'm not surprised at the statistics that tell me most option traders lose money. The group that's listening to this and other seminars, uh, I, I think will have a much, uh, a, a much higher win rate than, um, than the, the group I'm talking about. All right, anyway, so that, that was kind of an aside, the, the good news and bad news. All right, here's the notation. Uh, delta and gamma are both percentages. So the delta for one option could be shown as 85% or 0.85. But most of the time, we're gonna be talking about the delta for an option contract. And, and since uh, an option contract represents 100 shares of stock, we'll just multiply by 100, and that has the impact of removing the, the decimal point or moving uh, the decimal point two places over to the right. Okay? All right. Call deltas. But call deltas are... Um, Call deltas increase, or, well, generally call deltas are positive because the premiums increase as the price of stock increases. So if we have a, a deep in the money call, that's going to have a delta of approximately 100. That's what uh, ITM represents in the money. Deep in the money calls have deltas of approximately 100, and they're going to act like long stock. At the money calls have deltas of approximately 50. The more time to go, by the way, uh, the higher that delta might be. So if there was a month to go, it might be 52. If it was uh, three months to go, it might be closer to 60, maybe 57, 58, something like that. Um, but far out of the money calls have deltas of approximately zero. And short calls have negative deltas, okay? Long calls have positive deltas. Short calls have negative deltas. How do puts work? Put premiums decrease as the price of a stock increases. So put deltas are negative. 
Deep in the money puts have deltas of approximately minus 100, and it's going to act like short stock. At the money puts have deltas of approximately minus 50, and far out of the money puts have deltas of approximately zero. Short puts have positive deltas. So if we sell a put, uh, we're, we're going to have positive deltas in our position. Okay? The delta of long stock is always 100. And the delta of short stock is always minus 100. What about gamma? Well, the gamma of long stock is always zero. Some people would just say NA, uh, it's not applicable. But when you think about it, what is gamma? Well, gamma is the change in delta. If delta is always 100, then the change in delta is going to be zero, 100 minus 100, or minus 100 minus minus 100. Uh, the gamma of short stock is always zero as well. What's the delta of cash? Lots of times uh, I'll ask that question and I'm told, well, it, it's probably 100 also. And uh, the answer is, well, no, it, it's probably, um, probably NA. Cash doesn't have a delta. If anything, you might say zero. The example I would use uh, is, is this. Suppose you have $1,000 in the bank, cash, right? And, and IBM goes up a dollar. How much money will you have in the bank? Well, you'll, you'll still have the $1,000. So uh, the, the change in the stock price doesn't affect, um, doesn't affect cash. All right, here's a, a relationship between um, put and call deltas. I'm just going to show it to you now. Um, in my mentoring program, I prove why it's true. Um, but for right now, I, I, I don't want to take the time for that. But the call delta minus the put delta always has to equal 100. And I'm talking about the same strike, same expiration, the, the corresponding call and put. So the 50 call minus the 50 put has to equal 100, okay? And what, what about the relationship between the put and call gamma? Well, that's easy, they're equal. It's not an obvious thing and you might wanna think it through. Again, um, if we had a lot of time, I, I would prove it. Uh, to you, but uh, and uh, I'll give you my contact information later on. You could always feel free to uh, to send me an email or to uh, or to call. I like talking to option traders um, about options. Okay, how does delta work? Here's a, a formula for those who like to look at things that way. We're going to use P as the option premium, D is the delta. Let me get the uh, the pen working here. N is the stock movement, positive for an increase and negative for a decrease. Assuming nothing else changes, then a, a movement of M, um, we calculate the new option premium this way. We say the, pre the new premium is equal to the old premium plus delta times the, the movement. And really, it, you know, the formula is quite straightforward. The only problem that you might run into is uh, with, with the signs of things. So just be careful. Uh, delta could be positive or negative, and the movement could be positive or negative, and the premium, well, whether we buy or sell, could be positive or negative. So you, you just have to be careful with those things. And of, of course, um, you need to know the rules of multiplying positive and negative numbers together. Um, a positive times a negative is negative, and a negative times a negative is positive. Um, well, I won't tell you why I, I added those, but I have found not everybody's aware of it, and I have a good story, but not for today. Anyway, here's an example of delta using calls, uh, just so you could see how the numbers work. So we have a stock price of 37.50, and we're looking at the Jan 30, uh, the Jan 35 call which is trading at 375, and the delta is 0.7, okay? So if the stock would go to 36.5, that, that's down a dollar, we calculate the new premium like this. We take the old premium, the 375, plus the delta times the movement, 0.7 times minus a dollar, um, is 70 cents. We subtract from the 375, and that gives us the 305 over here. Okay, if the stock went up 20 cents to 37.70, for example, we calculate it the same way, but now the movement is plus 20 cents, and that gives us a, a new premium of 389. 
And uh, at 38, you can see the calculation. We're going to add 0.7 times 0.5. That's 35 cents for a new premium of 410. OK? And if there are questions, again, feel free. Uh, I'm not going to be able to talk about them uh, during this presentation, but feel free to send me an email or, uh, or to call. I'll give you that contact information at the end. Uh, here's an example of delta for puts. Really, uh, re really the same thing, except the delta for puts, as I said, is negative. And so we, we have to be a little careful about that. So at, um, at 36.50, again, down a dollar, we have the original 90 cent premium from here, plus negative 30, that's the, the delta times the movement, which is down a dollar. So we're really, in effect, adding 30, uh, adding 30 cents to the 90 cents for a, for a new premium of $1.20, okay? And if the uh, stock went up, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if the stock went down 10 cents from 37.50 to 37.40, yeah, here we are, down 10 cents, uh, we do the calculation the same way and we get uh, 93 cents. And if the stock went up, um, well, then the, the premium goes down, which is exactly what you'd expect if we're talking about puts, right? Okay. All right. So how do we change the delta of a position? We have a position on now, uh, and we want to know <clears throat> how, to, uh, how to change it, how to make it more positive. So how do we add positive deltas to a position? Well, we could buy stock. We already said that's 100. Uh, 100 deltas um, for every 100 shares of stock we buy. We could buy calls which have positive deltas, or we could sell puts. Puts are have negative deltas, and by selling them, we're adding positive deltas to a position. Okay? How do we add negative deltas to a position? Well, we could sell stock. If we don't own the stock, it, it would be shorting the stock. Um, we could buy puts, or we could sell calls. Any of these three ways will decrease the amount of deltas that you have in your position. All right? And how does gamma work? So we have a very similar type formula. Now we have D for delta, G for gamma, and M is still representing the, uh, the stock movement. Again, if nothing else changes, we calculate the new delta this way. Delta nu is equal to the old delta plus gamma times the amount of movement. Same caveats, beware of the, uh, of the signs, okay? And here, here's an example. So we have a stock at 37.50. The call is 3.75. The delta 0.7 and the gamma 0.04. Okay. Uh, if if the stock now would go from 37.50 to 36.50 down a dollar, we calculate the new delta. Now again, this isn't talking about the change in the price of the option. We're just talking about the change in the delta. Delta was 0.7. We put it through that formula. The um, the, the delta, the, the current delta, plus the gamma times the amount of movement, 0.04 times minus 1, would give me a new delta of 0.66. And the other calculations are, are similar. Just put in the, uh, the movement over here in the uh, parentheses and do the calculation. We come up with, uh, with the stock at 37.70, that's up 20 cents a new delta of 0.71, you know, 0.708 to be more precise. Sometimes people get a little too precise when, when thinking about these numbers. These are, I, I refer to deltas and gammas, actually all the Greeks, as soft numbers. You change an assumption a little bit and, and the Greeks change. So you have to be a little careful about not, um, not trying to be too precise with them. We want to be exact uh, as best we can, but if you try to go out uh, to more than a, a fixed number of decimal points, you're probably, uh, you're probably going a little too far. Anyway, with the stock going up to, to 38, from 37.50, we calculate the new, uh, the new delta to be 0.72, okay? All right, um, same calculation now for, for puts. You, you could just take a look at how it works. Um, the key is, is that we have negative, and, and that's why I show both of them, because um, there, sometimes there is some confusion when using negative numbers, okay? 
All right. So how do we combine deltas and gammas uh, and, and the other Greeks as well? But here's an example. So suppose we have this position. It's a made up position. Don't read anything into it other than uh, that we're using it as an example uh, for this webinar. So I'm long 10 of the Jan 35 calls. The delta is 60 and the gamma is 7. And I'm short 8 Jan 30 puts with a delta of minus 25 and a gamma of 3. And I'm long 10 of the Feb 40 puts with a delta of minus 50 and a gamma of 4. So the, the, the delta and gamma of the position are calculated this way. The, the delta uh, of the first, these are referred to as legs, and all three of them together are referred to as a position, an options position. So the way I calculate my delta is I take the number of contracts times the delta for each contract. Remember, these are contracts, so it's not 0.6, it's 60 deltas. And so the delta of, uh, of this leg is 600, the gamma is 70. So 10 times 60, 10 times 7. Um, for the second leg, it's minus 8 times minus 25. Again, minus times a minus. It's positive 200 deltas and negative 24 gamma. And in the last um, in the last leg, we have 10 contracts. So I have I'm short 500 deltas and long 40 gamma. My net position or my total position has 300 deltas and 86 gamma. Now what that means is over a short movement of the stock price. This will act as if it were 300 shares of stock. So if the stock went up 50 cents, I would expect to make about $150, okay? And if the stock went down 50 cents, I'd expect to lose about $150. Now, of course, that's going to change because of this guy. Because of the gamma that I have, the delta won't stay at 300, Right? So that's why I say over here for a small range of, of stock prices. Okay. Now I'm going to define a delta neutral position. And um, what I mean by that, it's a total position in a given stock where the sum of the deltas of puts, calls, and stock is close to or equal to zero. For retail traders, I, I normally say delta neutral is between minus 50 and positive 50 deltas. That would be close enough to delta neutral for most situations. When I was on the floor, for me, um, and I was just trading my own money, I was what you call a loco. Um, some would say a loco, loco. But anyway, uh, I would trade, delta neutral would be uh, minus 500 to positive 500. So if I was long or short the equivalent of 500 shares on something, it wouldn't matter much. Some of the guys who traded in my crowd, my trading crowd, uh, who were supported by, uh, by large companies, uh, trading companies or, uh, or brokerage companies, um, to them, delta neutral would be plus or minus 2,500 deltas. So because delta represents an amount of risk, because it, think of it as, as if it were stock. In fact, we used to call it stock or ESP, equivalent stock position. Um, so, you know, for, for various reasons, uh, some, some could take on, some people could take on more risk than others, uh, depending on how you sleep at night and depending on uh, how much capital you have to absorb that risk. So, but anyway. Um, so why delta neutral? What, what's, the, what's the concept here? It reduces the uh, directional component in the value of a position. The value of the position does not change over a small price range. The range can be extended if we make the position gamma neutral as well. Think about that. If we had zero gamma, that's what gamma neutral means, then the delta wouldn't change. And then you could keep on going, make it gamma gamma, because the gamma will change as stock price changes. We can make it gamma gamma neutral. There's a story about what that means, but um, not, not for today. Uh, this insurance, though, of making a position delta neutral, in other words, taking out the directional component in the, um, in the strategy, comes at, at an expense. You have to think of it as insurance. Okay, so what's the benefit of it? Well, let's take a look. 
It allows you to isolate one of the variables other than price that impact the value of the position. What variable is it? Well, usually it's volatility. Sometimes it's time. Um, it, it, when interest rates are moving around very quickly, it could be interest rates as, as well. Um, we could use it in conjunction with gamma scalping, but uh, I'm not going to be talking about that today. Uh, although gamma is a very interesting topic, I, I do talk about it in the in the mentoring program. Um, and other uh, another use of, of delta neutral, you could use um, use delta neutral as a hedge to protect a position for a period of time that you might have. And um, here here's something you know we we don't see this very much anymore. It's to take advantage of mispriced options. Uh, that, that doesn't happen so much. And when an option is really mispriced, it gives rise to an arbitrage opportunity. And the truth is for retail traders, um, that's not really available anymore. We don't, we don't see that. All right, so how do we make a position delta neutral? Suppose I have two options, a Jan 50 call, Jan 40 put. Um, these are the premiums, three and a dollar ten, and these are the deltas, sixty and negative twenty-five. I'm also showing the gamma because we'll talk about making it gamma neutral as well. But to make it delta neutral, just form a ratio of the deltas. So we have sixty over twenty-five is two point four, and what that means is that we want to buy two point four puts for every call. Um, obviously, you can't buy point four um, puts. You can only buy integer numbers or, or sell integer numbers of options. So um, what we could do is trade 12 puts for five calls. What put on 12 puts for uh, for every five calls? Here's here are the numbers. So we could buy five calls for every 12 puts. These are the calls. This would be the delta positive 300. This would be my gamma, and for the puts, 12. Um, well, I, for the 12 puts, I'd have negative 300 deltas, and my gamma would be 48. So when we add them up, we see the position is zero deltas, delta neutral, with positive gamma. Now, if we went the other way and sold five calls and sold 12 puts, I'd still have a delta neutral position, right? The, the numbers would be reversed, uh, but now I'd have negative gamma. And uh, another way to do this is we could have almost any combination. In this case, I have five calls and eight puts, and we're making it delta neutral by adjusting the position with stock. Now, in, and uh, here I'd end up with 72, uh, 72 gamma. Now, the theta and vega will be different in each of these positions. We're, we're not focusing on that right now, but, um, but that's something that, if you were putting on a real position, something you would want to know and probably look at and calculate. Okay, so what if we wanted to make a position gamma neutral and delta neutral? Well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first make the position gamma neutral, and then we, we could always adjust the deltas by buying or selling stock. So in the example that we have, if I buy 10 of the calls, it's going to give me 600 deltas and 80 gamma. Then if I sell 20 of the puts, I'm going to end up with 500 deltas, positive deltas. I'm selling puts, positive deltas, and negative 80 gamma. So now with just the first two legs, the calls and the puts, I have zero gamma, and I'd have 1,100 positive deltas. Well, I could neutralize that by selling 1,100 shares of stock, okay? So I'd end up with a, a, delta, um, a delta neutral position with zero gamma. Now, what, what the advantage of something like this is, is that this position will stay delta neutral over a much wider range, okay, because we have no gamma. Um, another way of, of doing this would be to sell the calls and buy the puts, as opposed to buying the calls and selling the puts. In this case, again, we'd have zero gamma. These two would give me zero gamma, and stock doesn't do anything for our gamma, either add or subtract to it. Um, but now we're short 1,100 shares of stock, the equivalent of 1,100 shares, so we'd have to buy 1,100 shares. 
okay? And again, we'd have a zero delta, zero gamma position. All right, here's an example now of, of delta neutral. We're gonna see a, uh, an example of how to use it. This is a theoretical example, but we have a stock at 55 and I have a position on long six November 50 calls um, at 625 with a delta of 80, short four Jan 45 puts at 210, delta of minus 30, and short 600 shares uh, of a $55 stock. And I have it this way because I'm putting it in the same context, minus six. Um, you could think of it as minus six contracts of 100 shares, okay? So uh, my delta position now is six times 80 is, you know, 480 delta minus four times minus 30 is positive 120 and I'm short 600. So I have a delta neutral position and I have a dollar value here of this position of, um, of a credit of $30,090. Okay, now let's see what happens as the stock price goes up and then goes down. All right, so uh, with the stock going up 50 cents, let's calculate what these numbers are. So we have to calculate the premium. Once we have the premium, we could calculate the dollar value and the gain or loss on that particular leg. Now, um, well, I'll, I'll just put them up so we could see it quickly. Here we have the calculation of the, um, the call. And the way that, that we calculated that was by taking the old premium. We're just using the formulas we, we've already seen, the 625. The stock's gone up 50 cents. That's our movement, or what I defined as movement, times the, uh, the delta of 80. Now, uh, what I would do is multiply 0.8 times 0.5, that's 40 cents, and add that onto the 625 to come up with my 665. Okay, from that, I could get the dollar value, 665 times six. Remember, uh, as a contract, this would be $665, right? Times six contracts is uh, a cost of 3,990 or a value of 3,990. I paid 3,750 over here for it, right? So I've made $240. On, on that leg. What about the puts? Well, I'll just throw it up. Um, we could do the calculation, but, but what's gonna end up happening is that the value uh, of the put that was 210 is now $1.95. So the, um, the dollar value is now $780. And we have a gain, we, we sold something for 840 and we're going to have to buy it back at 780. So that's a gain of $60. And then we on the uh, on the shares, we're short 600, the stock's gone up 50 cents. So you could see right away, or well, we could see this part right away, that we're going to be down uh, $300. Oh, just a quick note, looks like I left out the minus sign there. Okay, um, and if we add up the dollar value, notice it hasn't changed, and our gain or loss on the position is zero. We haven't made or lost any money on that position. Okay, so what's the big deal, by the way? We, we put on a position, we, we had it on, stock moved up 50 cents, we didn't make anything or lose anything, so why do we care? Well, we might have been focusing on volatility, and that's, that, that's what I'm gonna show you. Um, we, we assumed that only the stock price changed here. We didn't say anything about volatility. So the, we, we've taken the directional aspect out of this position. And uh, you're gonna see in, in an example of how to actually use this in a situation. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You're gonna see how, uh, how the volatility would impact it. All right, I'm just gonna put up these uh, next three or four. Uh, you could do the calculations if you'd like so you could see exactly, you could verify the, the numbers, but the bottom line is that the gain or loss with the stock going down a dollar now 
is still going to be zero. We haven't made or lost anything because we have this delta neutral position on. The dollar value is still 30,090 uh, credit because of the, uh, the, the short shares here, 600 shorts. All right. So, all right, now we have to look at something a little more real. So does it work? Well, here's a setup. We have a stock at 53, and this company uh, has a volatility that normally trades between 35 and 55, but earnings are coming out tomorrow. This is not real uh, for right now. It was a, a real example at one point, but um, we're, we're just going to call it XYZ stock. And earnings are coming out tomorrow, and let's say the volatility is 60. It's higher than the high range, and that's very, very common for, you know, for those who are familiar with uh, volatility trading. Um, and we know that after the earnings are announced, whether they're good, bad, or, um, or, or they don't tell you, um, the, the volatility will come in. That's one of the very few things, in fact, that we know about that we know about trading, um, that we could say, if this, then that. If earnings come out, then uh, volatility will decrease. All right, so what I want to do is put on a delta neutral position. I'm going to buy, well, the, the Jan 60 calls are trading at 227. The delta is 33 and a third. I had to add the third to, to give me 100 here. With 50, 50 days to go and a risk-free interest rate of, of 1%, um, I'm going to buy 100 shares of stock at 53, That's, and so um, stock always has a delta of 100. The delta of the position is 100 for the for the shares, and that cost me $5,300. 53 times the uh, the cost of the stock, the the value of the stock of 53. I'm going to sell three of the Jan 60 calls at 227. With a delta of 33, that's going to give me a, a position delta of minus 100 and a cost of a credit, because I'm selling something, money's coming into my account, of 681 for a net position, a delta of zero, and a net cost of 4619. I have this big because we want to remember this number for the next page, 4619. Okay, that's what it cost me. Earnings are coming out. And here's a chart. Does it work? Let's take a look. So one day later, the earnings are actually released, and the vol drops to 50. It was 60. It drops to 50. Yesterday, we paid 46.19. And let's see what happens at, um, at various stock prices. So here's the, the stock, XYZ stock at various prices. It was, it was 53 yesterday, so the change... Uh, I have various changes here from down 15% to up 15%. And you could see the value of the stock. That, that's easy. Um, the calls are, are calculated just using one day less in the calculation. This is based on a Black-Scholes model, but any options calculator uh, could do that. Um, with a stock price shown in the uh, XYZ column and uh, a volatility now that's <clears throat> that's 50 uh, instead of the 60 that was used. So here's the position value, and here's the gain or loss. So you could see with the stock dropping 15%, we're going to lose a little bit. Um, with the stock dropping 10%, that's going to be our break even. And all the way up to the stock earning going up 15%, we're going to be break even, but look at look at what we've made along the way. Okay, now above uh, above 6084 or below uh, below 4768, yes, we're going to lose money. But what we want to do is um, take a look at how volatile the stock normally trades after earnings come out and look at situations that put us within these parameters. Now, of course, for any particular situation, uh, the numbers are going to be different. And this is just for 100 shares of stock. And this is a one-day trade. So um, lots of times this could work out very well. Now, of course, just to, to be totally fair about it, if the stock dropped to 40 or, to, or went up to 65, the losses would be much greater. OK, uh, I don't want you to think we're getting anything for nothing here, but 
uh, what we're really, what, what's making this work is the drop in volatility. We have a, a hedged position and we know volatility is going to drop because earnings are coming out. Anyway, I've got to move on quickly. Um, so what are the problems? Well, the stock could move too far. Volatility might not come in enough. Worse yet, volatility could increase. That might happen. That really doesn't happen after earnings come out. Aside from a really bad earnings report where the stock drops a little bit, or, or drops a lot rather, I'm sorry, it, it drops a lot. And then uh, within a, a, a day or two, the, the volatility, even if the stock doesn't come back to, uh, to where it was, the volatility will reach its equilibrium level. Okay, It'll, uh, it will do that uh, almost all the time. Options don't behave as they should. Okay, you, you may lose to time, uh, time decay. That was not an issue in this particular example. That's a, a little more general. If, if you're doing a real small size, you, know, you have commissions and spreads and, and expenses to be concerned about. And then there are margin requirements. Um, so you might need more money. You know, we showed 4619, I think. Um, you're going to need some extra capital within the account to support the short option premiums that you have. All right. And then um, just a final kind of note, this position that we had of buying 100 shares and selling three of the uh, six, Jan 60 calls is synthetically equivalent to this position that I'm showing over here. And it's very important if you're going to trade options. Not all, I told you before, you needed to know the Greeks. You also have to understand synthetics because we could put on the equivalent position for, um, for a credit as opposed to this debit. Of course, we'll earn or lose the same amount, but this one might be a, a little easier to, uh, to put on. Um, so make sure to understand your synthetics. Very, very important. All right, now I'll tell you just uh, briefly about, uh, about the company, Macmillan Analysis Corp. We provide a lot of products and services. We have trade advisories, money management, educational materials, software products. What I'm really specializing in, what I do, is uh, I do consulting to institutions, hedge funds, and individuals. And I started and run a one-on-one -on -one mentoring program um, which if, if you contact me uh, either by email or phone, I'll provide the details uh, and tell you exactly how it works. There is something that's really neat about it. We've just recently, uh, within the last uh, six months or so, instituted a tuition reimbursement program. And the way that works is I, I have several, right now there are three brokers that are part of it. Uh, they will give you a reduced commission rate until you make up the cost of our mentoring. And um, it's, it, it wins, it's a win for everybody. It's a win for the brokers. They get trained customers. A win for, for us because we could advertise it and get students. And it's a win for the student because they really get free mentoring. So if you trade enough, it, it's like getting the mentoring really for free. Um, what else could I tell you? Well, thank you for, for coming, listening to me. Um, here's the, uh, the website, optionstrategist.com um, slash forward slash mentoring. And my number, 973-362-4558. Um, oh, and yes, we do have uh, some specials uh, you and also a PDF file. I know I went through things quickly. If you'd like a PDF, uh, there are no strings attached or anything like that. Just go to our website optionstrategist.com, DN for Delta Neutral, Delta, Delta Neutral 17. Okay. And um, I think I'm just about out of time here. These were the brain teasers that we didn't, uh, that we didn't look at, but if anyone wants to see them, they're here. And, uh, or they'll be on the PDF uh, version. And here's the contact information. So I guess, um, yeah, I, I don't have time for questions now, but if you do have questions, feel free to contact me. Email, phone number, and specials, and uh, PDF file. Thank you very much for listening. I wish everybody a lot of good luck with their trading.